All right, good evening, Saints. So we're going to be in part three of Duties of Christian Fellowship, um, which we've been going through. Um, and we'll just continue on to section two of the book. Before I start, I will pray. Um, and, and then we'll get started. <clears throat> our Lord and our God, we, uh, we praise you. We praise you and we thank you, God, for for being uh, kind to to a people like us, my God. Uh, and I pray, O oh Lord, that you would uh, that you would just help us tonight. That you would help us to love you. You would help us, O oh Lord, to be attentive to the word. Uh, be attentive, O oh Lord, to to what you call us, uh, how you call us to live, O oh Lord. I pray, O oh Lord, that we would, you would help us to walk faithfully, that you would help us to walk intimately with you, and that you would grow us as a body, O oh Lord. Would we do it for your glory uh, and for your namesake, O oh Lord. I ask that you would help me tonight, and I ask all these things in Christ's name. Amen. Amen. Alrighty, I'm just going to set up. All right, let me just, if you guys can just confirm that you guys can see the the screen, looks like you guys can. Um, so we'll, we'll just move forward. All right. All right, so we'll do a recap of what we studied last time, um, and then we will go on to section two of the book. Just need to get my uh All right, so um, last time uh, we went, we finished off section one of the book. So section one had to do with rules for walking in fellowship with respect to the pastor of the congregation. Um, and then there's typically an explanation of the rule and then the motives on why we ought to keep those rules. Um, so we'll just briefly go over, I'm not gonna go over in detail, but we'll go over, um, kind of just what we went through last time as a recap just to make sure we're all on the same page. So rule number four. Uh, rule number four was believers and this is rule number four of section one and we're on page 11 of the handout. Um, believers are to hold the pastor in the greatest respect and to submit to him for the work's sake. Um, so we spoke of how, how much disrespect the pastors typically get um, when they're out in the streets evangelizing um, behind closed doors where they're dealing with sin and so, when there's sin in the camp. Um, there's much disrespect that goes on and uh, we may not see it all, but as, as, as a body, we ought to, we ought to respect our, our pastors and our elders of, of, of the church knowing that God has ordained them to be the shepherd um, of, of our lives, uh, knowing that they will be accountable um, for watching over our souls. And so we ought to approach, um, we ought to approach them with the greatest respect. We ought to uh, be willingly um, submitting to them um, for, the, for, for the sake of, of, of the, the, the advancement advancement of the kingdom of God um, and so we want to make it as easy as possible for them to continue to faithfully minister the Word of God uh, we don't want to be a hurdle uh, we don't want to be a stumbling block we don't want to be uh, the reason why they um, feel tension um, when they come to the body when they come to preach the body you know on Sundays to preach the Word of God 
uh, the last thing we want to do is is be, uh, is be a, a a hurdle to to the preaching of the word of God, and so we ought to show respect to our pastors and elders. Rule number five was the church is required to support the pastor and his family by supplying all their earthly needs to the degree that is appropriate to the state and condition of the church. Um, we spoke on just how we ought to supply, you know, uh, for our pastors. We ought to support our pastors um, in, 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 in their earthly needs. And we spoke on like trying to gauge what the right amount is. And we, I said, there are some churches in which they don't pay their pastors at all, or they don't pay their pastors enough, um, enough to even feed uh, th themselves and their families. Um, and and on one on once that's that's one side of the spectrum, and obviously that's wrong. Um, and we know that there are exceptions to the rule, right? There are some churches in which they just don't have the the means to pay a pastor, and so a pastor has to uh, a pastor by vocation, right? He has to have a full time job and 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 pastor the ch the church, but. That is an exception to the rule and, and, and not the, the standard. We should strive, if and especially if we have it, we should uh, be providing for our pastors. And then on the other end of the spectrum, we want to make sure that, our, that we're not overly compensating our pastors to the point where they're living um, way beyond the means of the people of the church. Um, so the nice middle ground is obviously, you know, enough so that they're able to provide for, for themselves and for their families um, and and not so much so that they would be uh, out of the ordinary from from the rest of the the congregation um, that is uh, rule number five rule number six was uh, the church is to remain loyal to the pastor and to stay at his side in 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 all trials and persecutions that may arise because of the word, um, obviously we're not persecuted like like other countries, uh, other areas of the world. Um, we don't have many martyrs in America, um, but we ought to we ought to remain by our our pastor side. Um, there are going to be times in which uh, he will face trials, uh, he will face persecution. Uh, there will be people that will come against him. Um, and we ought to to remain by his side. I gave the example last time of well, well, how would it feel like if our pastor just decided to uh, get up and walk away and go to and go pastor another church without letting us know and he just he just left. Uh, we wouldn't we would feel as though he had broken loyalty bet between between us and him. Um, and so in the same way, we we shouldn't. When trials come, um, when things get difficult, we shouldn't just um, forsake our pastors um, or forsake our elders. We ought to remain there in loyalty um, in times of trials. Even now, you know, um, as 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 Pastor Peter has lost uh, Uncle Paul, we ought to be there to 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 comfort him in in any way that we can. We ought to be there to pray for him. We ought to be there and. In any way that we can assist him, we want to assist him um, to, to to be there of comfort um, and to, to, to remain loyal to him. So, um, and then it says that may arise because of the word. Uh, and then rule number seven we spoke on, believers along with their families must gather together as a congregation before the pastor at the times appointed by him. Um, and we didn't spend a lot of time on rule number seven, but essentially uh, what we spoke on is that our, our pastors are the ones that have decided uh, when we meet as a, as a congregation, right? Obviously, our main, the main times of which Grace Baptist meets is Sunday um, and Tuesday, which is today, to do our Bible studies. And then throughout um, throughout the month, we have different different meetings in terms of prayer meetings, in terms of um, men's breakfast, ladies' breakfast, um, discipleship groups. We ought to we ought to attend during those times as as often as we can, and 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 
we ought to do it um, because God has appointed them to to minister to our souls and they are only doing it for the benefit of of our walk of our spiritual walks and so we ought to we ought to come alongside we ought to even even now I know, I know that it's difficult I know that it's difficult to get on zooms and it's not the same as being in person um, to be in Bible studies and to to be in prayer meetings but we ought to strive to attend and 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 come together during the times that have been appointed by by our elders and so th that's just a brief recap in terms of the last four rules that we went over we're not going to be speaking on any rules pertaining to um, fellowship with the pastor of the congregation we're just going to be speaking on as you see here section two says rules for walking in fellowship with respect to other believers um, so this is going to be um, rules in in terms of how it impacts one and the, one another as as believers and so let's get into it all right so er, owen now turns his attention to we're gonna we're gonna have 15 duties um and these 15 duties all have to do with church members um toward one another um as christians we ought not to um just see each other on Sundays or see each other on Tuesdays but we ought to um, we ought to, to, to live life together uh, we ought to walk with one another we ought to walk in fellowship um, and this includes frequent in, uh, interactions with one another um, we ought to we ought to be doing life with one another right we don't just meet you know, we shouldn't just meet Sundays and, and Tuesdays. Right now, it's obviously different different circumstance, but we shouldn't just meet uh, during those days. We should be frequently meeting with one another, fellowship with one another, going out to evangelize with one another. Um, um, we ought to be doing side by side um, living. And the question that, that you have to ask yourself before we even get into this is, how are you doing in this? Um, these rules that we're going to go over are, are intended uh, that you might grow in the area of Christian communion. And you have to ask yourself, how am I doing in, in, in walking um, closely and intimately with other believers in my local body? Um, are you living a life in which um, no one really knows what's going on in your life? Are you um, what you what what others are, would consider a a, a a lone ranger Christian? Because um, there there shouldn't be such thing, right? We should be all intimately walking close together, and this is what what Owen is going to point out in these fifteen rules. So we'll get into uh, rule number one. <clears throat> so rule number one, it says, Believers <clears throat> have a duty of affectionate, sincere, genuine love in all things toward one another. A love compared to that of Christ for the church. So John Owen obviously starts off by stating believers, right? Uh, and this this command or this rule can only and, and especially should be applied to believers. Um, this is not a, a command or a rule that the world can fulfill. Um, and they can't even get close to possessing um, this this rule that John Owen states. Why is that? Well, they don't they don't know what love is. They don't know who God is, right? Um, and in not knowing who God is, uh, they lack to understand what true love is. Uh, love to the world is, is simply led by emotions. It's just a feeling for, for the world. Um, in the world's eyes, you know, once they fall out of love, they, they, they no longer want to be with the person. It's the reason why we have so much divorce is because there's a lack of understanding of, of what love is. 
Um, and so as believers, we know what love is because love is demonstrated through the cross of, of Calvary. Love is demonstrated through the Father sending His Son into the world to die for a people like us. Uh, and so we have uh, the perfect demonstration of what love is. Um, and we see it in the Word of God, throughout the Word of God. And so what we know what love is. And so it would be pretty shameful if 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 we as 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 the bride of Christ as God's people uh, did not did not love one another uh, did not strive to love one another um, this rule is is foundational to to fellowship right love is foundational to everything that the word commands us to do um, it's it's foundational to any church that professes to know Christ. Um, it is foundational to the duties toward God and man, and it is the basis of all rules that concerns the saints. The bond of communion. John Owen puts it like this: It is the fountain, the rule, the scope, the aim, the fruit of gospel communion. Right? You remove. A love out of out of the out of fellowship we no longer will have fellowship um, and so John Owen is saying in this rule that we oughta it is the duty to have love toward toward the Saints it is the it is our duty to to love one another um, if if we think about it what would our church look like if we didn't have love what what would it look like? Well, I can tell you that it would it would probably be full of discord. It'd probably be full of gossip and slander and division and hatred. Um, and the reality is, we probably wouldn't have a church, right? We'd drive each other away um, without love. We would look more like the world in this respect if we if we lack love right we wouldn't look like the, the 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 church of god we wouldn't look like the bride of christ if we didn't have love uh, do you believe that if, if a sinner if, if an unbeliever were to come into our into into the midst of of our services of our congregation and they didn't see any love that that they will be compelled to um, to want to know God, to want to know Christ? Um, probably not. Um, probably not. So it is it is very distasteful uh, when a church lacks love. Um, when they seem to be enemies instead of striving to please the king together, instead of striving to be on one mission, to be single-minded, uh, to live for God, it, it, it is it is honestly distasteful. Um, I have been I have been amongst you know there have been times in where I've I've gotten out and this this was years ago um, t times out of churches where like we just got out of church and it would just be gossip and I was a new believer but I knew that. Like that didn't sit well with me, you know, and I knew that that that's not what we were called to do. Um, and my first impression of the church was wasn't wasn't the best one because of it. Um, but thank God, like as as I read through His Word, like the Lord worked um, on, on those things and in that area, and He's still working because there's still a lot of work um, that needs to happen. But but imagine imagine that we we didn't have love you know imagine what we would look like um in in light of the world marina says seeking our own interests and benefit instead of working together to bring god's glory right um so it would kind of it would kind of just be like you know and, and this sadly this happens right sadly a lot of people go around uh they're they're 
they go church shopping. Um, they don't last in churches because um, it's all about them. You know, it, it's all about w what pleases them, what their preferences are. Um, and it's, it's little about how they can serve the people that God has placed in their lives. Um, how they can walk intimately with other believers that are in with that are in the same body that they're in, um, and it's all about me, 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 and my preferences. And I don't like the worship, and I don't like the music, and I don't like the preaching. And ah, oh, it's too hot, too cold. The seats are ugly. This place is ugly. It's 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 just it's it's that's not that's not the focus of of why we come to service. Um, Owen says, he says, he not only says that we ought to love one another, but he says it ought to be affectionate. It ought to be sincere. It ought to be genuine in all things toward, in all things toward one another. Uh, so the love that we have, it ought to be for one another. It ought to be tender. Uh, we ought to be devoted. It ought to be real. Like it ought to be tangible. It ought to be something that can be demonstrated. Like, that, that, that can be visible to others. Um, it ought to be real and transparent, right? We don't, you know, we're not commanded to, um, to, 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 you know, if we, if we see sin, we're not commanded to just cover it, cover the sin, you know, and just allow our brothers and sisters to live a life of sin. No, we call them to repentance. Um, and we see something that 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 we see um, that is sinful, that is going against the scriptures, then we we call that brother or sister to repentance, and and we bring the scriptures with us because we love them, because we are striving together to be holy. Um, so. So this is the type of love that that we must have as a body. Uh, this is uh, what we must demonstrate as. This is the desire that I have. I'm sure this is the desire that, that Pastor Peter and Phil has for the body, that, that we would grow in this love. Of course, no church is perfect, right? There's going to be times in which we have differences. We're, there are going to be times in which we have tension, and, 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 and we may have little uh, fights here and there. But we should be striving uh, to grow in this area, right? Uh, this is foundational to everything else uh, that the scriptures c call us to be, right? No way that we can be holy um, as he is holy without love. So we ought to, it, it, it ought to not just scratch the surface when it comes to loving one another, right? We shouldn't just be superficial in, in each other's lives and just know like a little bit about each other's lives. We should be like, intimately involved with one another right when someone is struggling when another brother or sister is struggling like it shouldn't be something that i don't know about I'm, of course i'm not going to know everything about everyone um but someone within the body that that you are walking with and and are accountable to and, and striving uh, to be holy with should know right um so the love that John Owen is describing is is one of deep commitment. Um, it's one of one that is real, um, and it's obviously it's accomplished because of the commonality that we have, which is faith in Jesus Christ. Right? This love is it's it is obviously um, supernatural. Right? When we encounter another believer. Even if we don't know them, there's instant, it's instant love, like right? it's an instant connection. There's an instant bond when we encounter, when, when we're taking a flight, we come across another believer and we start talking and just encouraging one another. And, and that that should be all the more in in amongst your your local body, the church in which you attend with the people that you're walking with. Um, so this should be true of us as 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 believers in Grace Baptist Church. So it is crucial for us to love one another, right? To love one another, um, it is 
it shows or is evidence that we truly love God. First John um, 4.19 to 21. I don't think I put it on here. But first John 14 of uh, chapter 4, 19, verses 21, verses 19 to 21 says, We love because he first loved us. If someone says, I love God and hates his brother, he is a liar. For the one who does not love his brother, whom he has seen, cannot love God, whom he has not seen. And this commandment we have from him, that the one who loves God should also love his brother. Right? Um, obviously, it is evidence that we love God. Like, this verse is clear. Like, if we love our brother, it means that we love God. If we say that we love God, but we do not love our brother, if we lack love, um, then... And I'm sorry, but this verse is saying you don't, you don't truly love God. Um, and notice it says, um, it, it points out, we love because He first loved us. right? So our love for one another is not based on how we feel for, for one another or toward one another. Or whether or not we can relate with that brother or sister. Or whether or not that person is our age and likes the things that we like or has the same personality that we have no there's 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 not a, a criteria to, to the love that we that we have toward the brethren we ought to love all brethren despite you know despite who they are or, or where they are or what where they're from it doesn't matter the scriptures command us to love um, and it's it's not is not contingent on anything. I mean, if we have faith in, in, in the Lord Jesus Christ, and they have faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, then we ought to love them. Um, our love toward the brother ought to flow from the love that we have received from God. That is the motive. That is the driver on, on us loving the brethren. Um, and... and that's how we ought to live. Um, this verse, these these verses are actually saying that we cannot do the two things simultaneously, right? Um, we cannot we cannot say that we love God, um, but not love the brother. We can't do it. It's not. That's what the verse is saying. If we say we love God, then we must love the brethren. If we if we don't love the brethren, then we don't love God. It's it's pretty simple. So. It it's it's evidence the love that we show one another is evidence that we we love God, but it's also evidence that it gives validity to the gospel that we proclaim. It gives validity to the gospel that we profess to have, right? It is proof, it's kind of proof to the pudding. It's proof that we're saved. When when others are looking inward they're, when they're looking at the church they ought to see uh, a group of people that love one another john 13 verses 34 and 35 um i put it here a new commandment i give to you that you love one another even as i have loved you that you also love one another by this, all men will know that you are my disciples, if you love one another. And so the question that, that is posed just by reading this verse is, are we a reflection of the command that we hear from Jesus from Jesus in this verse, in these verses? Um, do, do, do men know us by the love that we have for one another? Um, an unbeliever should see and this is one of the reasons why you not know, this is one of the reasons in which um I love Grace Baptist and I obviously love Queens because the reason why Grace Baptist is 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 so diverse is because we live in Queens um well, most of us live in Queens is is there's a mixture of of people from all different nationality and ethnicities and and all different ages and 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 you don't really see that in a lot of different places, um, but the church should see 
no, no matter where you are, there should there should be a a mixture, whether it's a mixture of ages, uh, different dif different nationality, ethnicities, whatever it is, whatever the mixture is in the context that you live, uh, the unbeliever should see like people coming together that wouldn't otherwise come together, right? Um, because of the God that they claim to know, right? It's 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 because God has saved us. It's because God has shed His love on us that we love other that that we love the the brethren, right? That we we desire to walk in intimacy um, with with the other brothers. Um, and so the question that that we must ask ourselves is: Do we believe that God is love? And if He is, if you believe that God is love, then are you living a life that demonstrates love to others, love, love to the brethren? Um, this, I believe that this area specifically speaks and gives validity to the faith that we proclaim. Um, this is one of the areas in which um, unbelievers, those who are not Christians, they 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 notice and they notice it quickly. Um, if 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 I come come home or I'm spending time around my family and and, and they're unbelievers and I'm I'm gossiping about the very people that I go to church with um, it wouldn't sit well with them um, they'll pick it up they'll notice um, and they'll, they'll see the hypocrisy in it and so we, we must be careful in in this area and we ought to desire to walk um, we, we ought to desire to walk in 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 integrity in this area and and just and in striving to love the brethren so I think it's important to understand what love is and, and we're gonna spend I know we're spending most of our time on on this one uh, rule but I think this rule is probably the most important out of the three um, so I want to define what is love if you guys want to comment what is love? What is biblical love? What is this love that that John Owen is commanding us to love? What does it look like? Um, and sorry, I haven't been reading the comments, but um, I'll start looking at my phone to to try and look um, <clears throat> read the comments. So, so what is this love that John Owen is speaking of? Well, I think. I think we can go to the scriptures for this, right? The passage that comes to mind is 1 Corinthians 13, verses 4 and 7. And I know that this is probably, um, this is used mostly at weddings and, and, and ceremonies and things of that nature. But uh, when Paul was writing this, he was writing this to a church. He was writing this to the church of Corinthians who had all these spiritual gifts, but they lacked love. And so he's writing them and exhorting them to love one another. And so I think it's applicable to us as, as we're speaking on, on this very topic. So 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verses 4 to 7. It says, Love is patient. Love is kind. It is not jealous. Love does not brag. It is not arrogant. It does not act unbecomingly. It does not seek its own. It is not provoked. It does not take into account a wrong suffered, does not rejoice in unrighteousness, but rejoices with the truth. It bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. So we need to, I'll read some, um, some comments. So Denise said, love is giving of oneself for the sake of others. We love because he first loved us. Yes, um, preferring others above yourself. When we meet a believer we never met, we have Christ in common. Yes, um, so all those things are 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 correct. Um, so I, I just want to break apart this verse and kind of get get some practical examples of of what this looks like in terms of the love. I think this this passage here is 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 perfect example of what love is, um, but it says love is patient, right? Uh, that means that we are slow to anger. Um, 
slow to anger. Uh, we shouldn't get mad or, or kind of just separate ourselves because one saint is weaker, is weaker than you in, in one area. Uh, but we ought to be barren with one another. Um, and we ought to be patient in, 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 in the other brother's or sister's sanctification, right? Not everyone is growing at the same pace. Uh, different people are struggling with different things. You may not struggle with the same thing that, that another sister or brother struggles with. And so you ought to be patient. Uh, patient with them and, and your desire is to, to help them to grow uh, in that area. Love is kind, right? It goes, it goes out out of when we speak of love being kind. It, that means this is a person that goes out of their way to to serve to serve others, right? And just as John Owen states, it is one that is affectionate. It's, it is one that is tender and gentle with others, right? He's not it's not always bringing down the hammer uh, when there's sin in the camp. Yes, we, we, we want to deal with sin, uh, but we want to do we want to do it tenderly. Uh, we want to love others tenderly um, and with compassion. Right? We are not to be harsh with believers. Uh, it is not jealous, right? We shouldn't be jealous of one another. God has given us different different uh, gifts, different uh, lifestyles, different jobs. We shouldn't be jealous of one another, right? And as believers, our, our goal is not to show off what we have, you know, like material things. We understand that everything that we've been, we have has been given to us by God. Um, we understand that every good gift comes from God. Um, instead, what we ought to be uh, showing off is, 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 is that we live for Christ is that our aim is Christ's and that whatever God gives us we're going to use it to advance his kingdom and we're not like the world and, and, and we shouldn't be like the world in, in the in the aspect that they they live to get attention right um, from others right by by the car that they drive or by the house that they own by the job that they have by, by the amount of money that they make all of that is 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 you know is what millennials will call flexing you know they're they they're just showing off um, and we ought not to be like that that's that's not how we ought to be so the question would be can others look can others say by looking at our lives that that that, that we're living for Christ that it's all about Christ that it's not about the stuff that we have but it is about Christ verse goes on to say not arrogant not to and and this means that we ought not to live in a way that is boastful or arrogant right um, who likes an arrogant person who likes to be around someone that knows it all or thinks that they know it all not even the world wants to be around those that are arrogant um, so we ought not to be arrogant amongst one another um, it says it does not seek its own uh, unbecomingly. So, so everything shouldn't revolve around us, right? We are, we are not to think that the whole church is for us. We are not to come to the church and attend the church as though the service is, is, is for us. And, and everything should revolve around us. No, we ought to put each other above, above one another. We have to come with the mindset of wanting to serve one another, not simply to be served. Yes, we want to come and we want to come hear the word of God and we, we, we want to hear the preaching of the word of God. But we also want to put it into practice um, by loving others, by encouraging others, by sharpening, sh sharpening iron. Right. Uh, it, it is not provoked, um, Paul says, not grumpy. Um, it does not take into account wrong sufferings, um, right? We, it does not rejoice in unrighteousness, but rejoices in the truth. As as believers, you know we we are not happy when when another brother or sister falls into sin. Right? That's we're not happy. We're not like the world where, you know, if someone 
that that you don't like didn't get a promotion you're happy for that no you know we are our desire is to walk holy together and when someone falls and when another saint falls uh, we ought to grieve and we ought to push them to Christ and point them to Christ um, and, and that's how we ought to, to to walk our desire ought to be to walk in truth amongst uh, amongst ourselves um, we should want the same for others it says it, it says the verse says it bears all things believe believes all things hopes all things right bears all things we willingly carry each other's burdens when someone passes um, someone's struggling someone loses a job whatever practical thing that we can do to help a brother or sister we want to do it it should be a desire to do it. and if we don't have that desire then we must pray that that it would be a desire that God would give us um, the the heart for for his people um, and and we all need work in that area believes all things right when someone asks you for forgiveness you, you don't say I don't I don't believe you um, I don't believe that you're truly sorrowful no you ought to believe it you ought to take them for their word if they're coming to you in repentance then 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 forgive them and and keep it going um, it helps all things and it, it endures all things right we ought to be committed uh, we ought not to be easily rattled um, by one another um, um, or, or shaken like our love is, is not rocky we understand that we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna encounter tension at times and we're gonna encounter difference of opinion and difference of, of preference uh, but that should shouldn't easily rattle us right um, or, or, or or make us to to separate ourselves from others um, <laughs> Okay, uh, so let's go over some of these questions and I'll pay attention to my phone now. Uh, so, <clears throat> John Owen believed that his day, mutual love was a grace that was shamefully, that shamefully has been lost among those who call themselves Christians. To dishonor, to the dishonor of Christ and his gospel, is this not true? Is this true today or not? So, kind of let's do the same method that we did last time. If you're going to answer a question, just put Q1 so I know what question you're responding to, or Q2 or Q3. Um, the second question is, when this necessary grace of love is weak among us, how do we restore it? When we when we fit when we fail um, to have love for one another, how do we restore it? What do we do um, when we're lacking in this? And then question number three is, the comment is sometimes heard, we do not have to like all, all the believers, but to love them. Is this a valid distinction, right? Do we, do we get to pick and choose who we like in the body and, and say, well, as long as I love them, I don't really have to like them. Um, is that a valid distinction that we can make? So I'll give you guys time to answer that. And then I'll, I'll read some of the verses um, that we have here. So John 15, 12 says, This is my commandment, that you love one another just as I have loved you. Romans 13, 8 says, Owe nothing to anyone except to love one another. For he who loves his neighbor has fulfilled the law. Ephesians 5, 2, Walk in love just as Christ also loved you and gave himself for us, an offering and a sacrifice to God as a fragrant aroma. First Thessalonians 3.12 And may the Lord cause you to increase and abound in love for one another and for all people just as we do for you. Right? This is something that, um, th that, is, that is a prayer that we should, we should have, that we would abound in love for one another. Um, 1 Thessalonians 4 9. Now, as to the love of the brethren, you have no need for anyone to write to you. For you yourselves are taught by God to love one another. 
Okay, so we're getting some <clears throat> some responses to the to some of the questions. So Anne says, "Thank you, um, to God be the glory." Um, all right, Mark. Question one says, "We restore it by learning and remembering the love of Christ, despite our many sins. In light of that, seeing how we should love one another, despite our flaws, struggles, disagreements, etc." Right. Um, I, I think the, the important thing is to look to Christ, right? Many times I'm not patient, um, and I know I need to be patient, but I, I'm not. Um, and then I think on God's patience. Uh, and I think on, well, how patient has God been with me? Um, and it's a great motivator for me to, 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 to strive to be like Him. Um, it's, it humbles me when when i when i um when i when i read the scriptures and see his patience right yeah i don't know either i don't know either is these um a vet says fortunately there are some christians that have more knowledge than others and are more seasons than other than, than others and critical instead of of teaching I found that there are songs I've liked and turned out to be artists who do not live by the gospel. Once I know I'm more careful. Yeah, it's true. I mean, just because we're more knowledgeable, uh, first of all, the reason, the the fact that we're more knowledgeable um, doesn't make us more important or more loved by God than the weaker Christian um, or the one that knows less. Um, we ought to our our theology ought to ought to lead to or to to to, to doxology you know, it ought to lead to to praise and then it ought to lead to to put it into practice all all the theology we know mm okay All right, so Catherine has a question. Can we truly love a brother and not like someone or like to hang out with them? As in their character, maybe the type of person uh, they are, even though. So I, I think there are times, and this has happened to me, um, there are times in which I have all the intention to love a brother. Um, and I have attempted to in many ways to um, to get to know them. And they personally maybe didn't didn't uh, feel as open, you know, like with me, um, and I was okay with that. I was okay with that after several attempts of 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 um, not being able to, you know, speak into their life. Uh, I was okay with. Um, I was okay with just having another brother to go and 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 and, and minister and to and to aid that person uh, in their walk. Um, so I, I don't think we're we're always gonna like mix with you know mesh with everyone, um, but it doesn't mean that we ought not to love them, right? It doesn't mean that we should separate ourselves from them. Um, I should strive in every way to to love that brother as much as I can. Um, and if I I'm not you know walking with them as closely as as someone else I'm okay with that. Um, but there ought to, there ought not to be a, a division in my heart toward that to, toward that brother. Um, yes. Yes. Uh, mainly prayer and commit to proper fellowship with the saints. Yeah. Or to practice. Yeah. Amen. Um, so we ought to um, put it into practice. Whatever whatever we learn. All right, so yes, um, yeah. So I think I think we'll move on from this rule. Um, let's see if we have time for. So we we should have time for another one. Um, so we won't finish. We won't get to rule number three, but that's okay. Um, so we move on to rule number two. Uh, 
Believers must maintain continual prayer for the prospering of the church under God's protection. So, <clears throat> we'll read a couple of verses just just to um, just to kind of um, get some support to John Owen's rule. Psalm one twenty two six says, "Pray for peace of Jerusalem. May they who prosper." May they who prosper, who love you. Um, Acts 12.5 So Peter was kept in prison, but prayer for him was being made fervently by the church of God. Right. So in, 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 in Peter's struggle, he still had brethren praying for him, praying for his trial, praying for him as, praying for his imprisonment. Um, and, and I'm sure that greatly blessed him. And I'm sure that greatly uh, helped them, uh, and, and God heard their prayers. Um, Philippians 1, verses 4 and 5 says, Always offering prayer with joy in my prayer for you all. This is something that Paul did for the saints. Every time he, he writes in epistles, uh, he, say, he, he always mentions how he prays for them, how he's been praying for them. Right? His, his greatest desire was to see them grow in maturity grow in the knowledge of our all right guys sorry about that uh, looks like I got cut off um, so I'm not sure how far um, I got before I got cut off um, but I'm just gonna pick up where where I was um, so <clears throat> the first expression of, of Christian love is continual prayer for the fruit Fullness of the church and God's protection toward it. Um, so, just as 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 prayer is is uh, is 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 great means of prevailing with God, it is it is also sure refuge to all the saints at all times, right? For their own for their own on their own behalf, but also on the behalf of others. Uh, it is. Through prayer that we can demonstrate dependency uh, on God. It is through prayer that we can uh, demonstrate humility before the Lord. Um, and John Owen puts it this way, It is a benefit which, poorest, which the poorest believer may bestow. Right. So think about it. The gift that we have, the gift that Christ has accomplished by going to the cross is is that we can we we have now been all been afforded the opportunity to come before the Lord to come in to enter into the holy of holies to to plead before the Lord on 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 behalf of others right not only on behalf of our needs and, and our struggles but on the on behalf of the the struggle of other believers and this is one way in which we can bear one another's burdens by praying by praying when someone else is going through facing sin or or struggling with sin or they're going through trial they're facing infirmity we can be praying for that brother or sister and carrying the burden with them right um, when we pray we're coming under submission of God's will and his ways do you not think that 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 our prayer for others is going to affect how we view the church, um, I would say it, it 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 certainly will. It certainly will cause us to be more affectionate and more tender and more loving and more genuine toward one another. The more that we pray for for one another, the more that we're gonna we're gonna be able to walk in the love uh, that the previous rule was speaking of. Um, it is through prayer that 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 God aligns our hearts to his will and to his ways. Uh, and church members are to pray for the church and for its prosperity, for its prosperity, for its flourishing, for peace, for increase, for edification, for protection. Keeping in mind that it is a duty every day required of all members. Right? We, we, we ought to consistently bring in 
um, one another before the Lord and one another's needs before the Lord. And in order for you to do this, you must have a time in which you pray, a time in which you come before the Lord yourself, um, individually. Um, so, so we ought to be praying for the church as a whole. And we ought to be praying for those in, individually that we know are struggling or are in need. Uh, Psalm 122.6 instructs that Israel, that, that the Israelites pray for the peace of Jerusalem. And Acts 12.5 states that when Peter was in prison, constant prayer was offered to God by the church. So both, both of these instances, there were believers that came together with unified hearts to pray and to, to, to petition God for their request, um, for the request of um, Jerusalem and for the request of, of Paul. And so now I, I want to give us just a couple brief reasons and we'll close out in, in the next five, ten minutes. Um, I want to give us just some practical reasons why we ought to, to be praying for the church. Um, First reason is it's going to help us to be focused on the goal. The goal is, is God. The goal is to be like God, to be like Christ, to be conformed to the image of Christ. Uh, and this praying for others is going to help us to accomplish this. We spoke on the previous rule in, in section one uh, that we ought to be praying for our pastor. And we said that the more that we pray for our pastor, uh, the more used he's going to be of God, the more power uh, that, that God is going to give him. Um, we want him to remain faithful to the preaching of the word of God, then we must pray. We must continue to pray for him. And it's the same thing for the body. We ought to continue to pray for its prosperity in, in the sense of spiritual maturity. Um, prayer puts into pr proper perspective where the power truly comes from. Understand that the power doesn't come from, from books. It doesn't come simply from books. Yes, books are helpful. Um, books will grow us. But it is through prayer that, that God um, provides power. It is through prayer that we grow in dependency toward God. And that God uses that as a means of grace to grow um, the body. And when we pray, uh, we are praying that the Lord would guard us against the attacks of the enemy. Uh, this is something that not only are we attacked individually as believers, but as a, as a body, we're going to be attacked as a church. Uh, we're going to be attacked to be, um, to, 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 to be divided, to be uh, not in unity, to do our own thing, to live our own life. Um, with, with false doctrine and heresy. We're going to be attacked in all different ways and, and prayer will help us to refrain. Prayer will help us, you know, coming before the Lord and asking that the Lord will help us in this area um, is very beneficial. Praying for the church leads us to want to be more committed to the church. If you don't pray for the, for the church, if you don't pray for the body, if you don't pray for the needs of the body, how do you think you're going to be committed to the body? I don't know. I don't know. Um, but the more that you pray for for the body, the more that you're going to want to be involved in their life. The more you're going to want to follow up and see how they're doing and see if God is hearing your prayer and how God has, has, has heard you and answered your prayer. Uh, and, and you're going to be blessed. And so praying for the body is going to keep you more knitted, more close-knitted to the body. Uh, and, and that's, that's what we ought to strive for, brothers. Um, this helps us practically to put others before ourselves um, and, and, and before our needs. Right? When we're praying for others, what we're saying is, not only am I going to pray for myself, but I want to spend time and pray for the needs of others because I'm considering my other, the other saints above my needs. And lastly, the last way um, that that we ought to be praying is prayer keeps on keeps us uh, focused on the mission, right? The mission, the mission to advance God's kingdom, the mission to grow in, in holiness, 
the mission to be more mature, the mission to grow from a young man to a, 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 a more mature man in the Lord or woman. So those are some reasons in which um, we should we should be uh, praying for the church. Um, I'll read the questions. We'll we'll end. We'll spend the last couple minutes just answering these questions, and and then uh, we'll we'll close out. So first question is similar to Rule Three of Section One. This is a burden that every that that should be laid out in every church during the prayer meeting. And daily in the lives of every believer's prayers. Is this the case? Is it the case that you're praying for the saints? Is this a reality in your life? Um, something that you must ask. Uh, question number two. How should we interpret and act on take no rest and give him no rest? Of Isaiah 62. And I'll read that verse right there. O walls. O, on your walls, O, o Jerusalem, I have appointed watchmen all day and all night. They will never keep silent. You who remind the Lord, take no rest for yourselves and give him no rest until, until he establishes and make, makes Jerusalem a praise in the earth. So the question is, what does it mean to, to take no rest and give him no rest, which we, which, which we just read? Uh, and the last question is, what exactly should we be praying for and seeking the prosperity of the church? I'll give you a couple minutes to answer the, those questions, and I'll kind of read the motives that John Owen gives us for obeying this rule. So, motive number one is respect for the ordinance of God, right? We ought to be praying for one another because obviously God commands us um, to pray for one another. Two, God's concern for God, uh, concern for God's glory, right? The reason why we're praying for other believers is because we desire to see God's name exalted. Uh, we desire to see God's name exalted in the life of other believers. And so we pray. We pray that, that God will be exalted in, in other believers, in the life um, of other believers. Um, so that is a motive in which, why, in, in which we, why we ought to pray for others. The honor of Jesus Christ. Our own benefit and spiritual interest. Understand that if, if, if the body as a whole is growing, we will grow. We will benefit from that. We will mature also with them. If we as a whole become men and women of prayer, then you're also going to become a man or a woman of prayer. If your whole church is doing it, you're you're gonna be you're gonna be influenced by it. If your whole church is strong on, on theology and strong on doctrine, you will also. Um, and so we should pray because it benefits us also. It's it benefits us spiritually. And lastly the directness of the command. So I'll, I'll end off just reading some of the questions, um, the responses. Let's see if we have any. Um, so Monica says, we endeavor to, but definitely know that there is room to, to improve and do better, right? Amen. And, and it's true. Like, we're not, we're not always praying for the body, but and as long as we recognize that, that we, we fall short in that area, um, we can we can examine and then work on that area and ask the Lord to help us. Um, I think I think that's all the responses in terms in terms of the questions that I see here. So um, all right, let me just read this last response. Um, all right, Monica says, question three, for spiritual growth, for the unity of the body, for the true gospel to be preach, preached and revered, and for God to add our number of believers. Amen. We should be praying not only for um, spiritual growth, but we should be praying that the Lord would um, 
bring in more unbelievers, would bring more people to the faith. Um, we should be praying that that we would make disciples of all, of all nations, of every creature, um, that we will be a, an evangelistic church. Um, I think I'm going to end it with there. Uh, uh, I apologize for all the technical difficulties that we had today, but um, uh, we'll, we'll get to the rule number three next time. With that being said, I'm going to pray us out. Um, and, and I want to thank you guys all for joining. Our Lord and our God, we, we praise you. Uh, we ask, O oh Lord, that you would help us to walk in love, uh, to walk in love with one another, uh, that we will be striving to, um, to esteem others above ourselves, that we would have a love that, that Christ had for his bride, uh, that we would demonstrate that very love to the brethren. Um, I pray even now in this time that you would help us even through, through Zoom calls and Zoom prayer meetings and through all the video meetings that we're having, I pray that we together as a body would come would grow, would, would want to be connected, would want to be committed, O oh Lord. Um, I pray, O oh Lord, that you would put it on our hearts as a church to, to grow in this area, to grow in love, to grow in unity. Um, I also pray that you would help us as a church to, to pray for one another, to bring our petitions and our supplications before you, trusting and knowing that you are a God that hears our, our prayer. Uh, you you, as, as we read in Isaiah 62, um, that we ought not to give you no rest. Um, and so, Lord, we help us to be persistent. Help us, O oh Lord, to, to, to trust in you and to depend on you as a body. I pray, O oh Lord, that you would bless your people. And I praise you and thank you in Christ's name. Amen. All right, folks. Have a great night. God bless.